Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Konadra here. Welcome back to Automation. Today, we're going to take a closer look at one of the entries to this week's one-hour build-off competition that took place on Tuesday on Twitch, as they do. This week, we did something rather interesting, and it was a Pikes Peak Hill Climb build in kind of a Group B era of theme. This is actually a theme that I personally came up with. It's not one for one group B and it's not one for one anything. It's just a collection of different ideas I put together that should make for some interesting cars to run up Pike's Peak. For the stream, we ran the cars on the short course, the time trial course. It's about a three minute long course and it's a nice representation of the midsection of Pike's Peak. However, today, we are going to take a look at the number three fastest car in the time trial on the entire Pikes Peak, which is a very, very daunting thing. But today, let's take a closer look at Racing Pro's entry. Before we begin, you must know the qualifications. This is a 1985 year competition. There was a tire rule, 450 millimeter front plus rear. That means one front and one rear, basically a 225 tire on all four tires would be the legal way to do it. Or, you know, any combination there between a 220 and 230. It's up to you what you want to do with that 450 millimeter. Semi-slicks are allowed. We are using a Group B inspired engine rule. 4 liter NA, 2.8 liter turbo. You have to score 100 in any non-convertible class. You had 10 quality points to spend on your entire build. And I asked for Intense and Wild Arrow because, well, it goes with the era. And we are using the open beta branch of automation. So that means not a lot of mods available to everybody. So maybe keep that in mind when you look at the designs. Racing Pro, number three on the time chart, had a 2.8 liter four valve cylinder Boxer 6, interesting choice, twin turbo, turbo cars were dominant up at the top, however there was some very competitive NA cars, as there was in Group B as well, that was something that there was some NA competitors back in the day, but not a lot that did anything great, turbos are just too hard to compete with at the end of the day, really very on point power curve here, a little bit of a weird dip in that mid-range, but when it comes to actually using the car, if you set your gearing up right, this is the area we're actually using. I think one thing that's interesting is there's no shelf here. This car has a curve. A lot of the turbo cars, especially in this 80s era, by the way, that says 1986. I'm on to you, Racing Pro. I'm on to you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a lot of these 80s era cars didn't always have a very nice linear power curve. It usually shelved. Moving on though, the design went for the arrow. I asked for good arrow. I got good arrow on this one. This, this, this has all the arrow you need and a tow hitch. It is a longitudinal all wheel drive, Monster 6 manual five speed, uh, geared LSD, very important, top tip of the day, don't use Viscous LSD for your BeamNG cars. They're going to be open diffs. 40-60 split on that power distribution. Went for the square setup, so 225 front, 225 rear, with a little bit of offset in play, but honestly, probably could have gone for some more. Not that that really affects things too much. And you can see the quality points are spread out. There was five on the engine, on the turbo, I believe. Here we got two on the tires. And there's three in the arrow with some really nice settings there. Suspension-wise, if you're just kind of curious what the deal was here, that is the settings. Honestly, these look pretty much default if I, if I know my default settings well enough. All right, that is Racing Pro's entry. Uh, the only thing we need to see, yeah, 129 in track. Open beta, pretty easy to score right now, so... I was giving people lots of wiggle room there, plenty of, of room to do crazy stuff, and that is what we got. 
So there is the build. How does it do on Pike's Peak?
Oh, sub 10. Overall, this ended up being one of my favorite cars to drive. It's just very fluid. It just feels, it feels natural to drive. I think it's the front wing. <laughs> I'm not kidding either. I do think the front arrow probably had some effect. If you don't know, the arrow in BeamNG is calculated by actual body surface area, not the in-game automation data. So it's kind of a mystery as to what you're going to get. And uh, this car has proven to me that that front arrow is probably pretty important. We may have to do some science someday and figure out just what all this stuff really means, but honestly, this was one of my favorite cars to drive, and it should be pretty obvious to you now which parts of Pikes Peak I'm familiar with and which I'm not. So much time left on the top of the hill and kind of in that starting area. In the middle, though, really, really a fine car, and this car ends up being the best at the long turns and the high speed turns. I wonder why. Seems fun. 